here from Rain Country, God is good all the time. And I'm here to talk yet again about dehydrating raw eggs. Now this doesn't matter if it is your eggs from your own chickens or eggs you're buying from the store. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Now initially what I was doing when I first started doing this about six months ago at the end of the, when the chickens were starting to slow down, I thought, oh, I should go ahead and give this a try was I was just putting the eggs in a measuring cup and mixing them up, you know, four or five at a time, depending on which dehydrator I was using. At the time, I was using the Nesco, and the Nesco I can hold a little bit more on those trays than I can on my Kasori, because I didn't get the Kasori until a little bit later. But I'm finding, a, I really am preferring my Kasori in a lot of ways. I'll still be using my Nescos, especially in the busiest part of the summer when I've got a lot of herbs going. Those will definitely be running off my solar power outside. But I want to talk about what you can use for that as well. But then somebody told me, and obviously this is going to make sense if you're doing a lot of eggs at a time. So at the time I was just wanting to do a tray at first, then maybe do another tray because I was just sort of working with them. But once you know you want to do a lot, it's going to be a lot easier to use your blender. Now you can see here I've got some egg powder in here and I'll talk about that in a minute. So the last batch that I did, because I also heard someone say that if you blend them up in the blender, they'll dehydrate faster. So I also wanted to give it a try in that way. I didn't find that they dried any faster blending them up first. Not at all. Even though I blended it for a while so it could get pretty foamy. You know, obviously it mixed them together better, but they didn't dehydrate any faster than just mixing them by hand where they're not perfectly blended. And actually it really doesn't matter if they're perfectly blended if you're going to process them up once they're dried anyway to look like this. Now obviously this is using the whole egg. Now I haven't tried it yet because I just haven't had a need to dehydrating the yolks and the whites separately. Uh, I, keep, I keep meaning to try at least with one egg just to see how well that does. But if anyone out there has, because I get a lot of questions on that, please share with us in comments down below. Have you dehydrated them separately and then been able to take the egg whites and use them to make a meringue? I would be curious about that. I don't do a lot of meringues anymore. I used to but I haven't done that in a long time, but if I ever want to again, it would be interesting to see how well the white dehydrated egg whites would work. So again, let me clarify, I've been talking about dehydrating, not freeze drying. I do not have a freeze dryer, nor do I have an interest in them. But using the blender definitely did make a quicker job of it, so I could just put a whole bunch of eggs in there once and then take care of it. Personally, a blender is a little more difficult to clean out than a measuring cup and a fork, but it's not that big a deal. So really, I think if you're just gonna try a small amount and you don't wanna clean out your blender, just mix it in a small bowl, measuring cup, whatever, and a fork, and then try it that way. Whatever appeals to you. So from now on, since I'll always be doing this in larger batches anyway, I'll be using the blender to process them just for the sake of it's much quicker. And then don't forget to save those eggshells. I set them aside, I, I put them in a bowl as I'm cracking them all, and then I'll, I'll rinse them out really well later, let them dry, and then I use those eggshells in many things. And I'll link to a couple videos down below on their uses and how I process them for using. Now for holding the eggs. So it's gonna be depending on your budget and what's available to you, but last year I was really thrilled to finally find some edged silicone sheets so I could get away from the plastic. Silicone is a little bit safer than plastic. On top of that, it doesn't warp the way plastic does. So that was the problem I was having last year when I was dehydrating whole milk and the raw eggs and various things that were very runny is I had a couple of trays that of plastic trays from my old Nesco that I didn't know were warped and then everything wanted to just run out. So I finally went ahead and invested in the silicone ones both for my Kasori and for my Nesco. But they also make them for Excalibur if you have one of those. So there's three different sizes, shapes that they have, uh, I know of for sure. And so I'll link to all three of those down below. So if you have a cabinet style, and this was a tip given to me by my followers, you put the tray in most of the way and then you pour your egg mixture on there. And then I just take a silicone spatula, scrape out the rest, and then spread that around evenly on the tray and then push it in the rest of the way. And that worked pretty, pretty good. If you have a Nesco where you can stack it, the nice thing about that is you don't have to mess with that. You just stack the tray, get your dehydrator set up in either case where you want it so you don't have to move it after you got these things full. Put your tray in place, 
fill up that tray, put the other tray on, and fill up that tray. That way nothing's getting moved once you've got those filled up. So the Nesco, I know the, those, the standard Nesco size, they will hold about five eggs, maybe even six. And this one I just used, I put four eggs in there because it, they're just a little bit smaller. Now some less expensive options that some people have shared with me is if you already have parchment paper on hand, you can go ahead and take that parchment paper, no matter what tray you're using, and then just pinch up the edges and use something to hold those edges in place, especially if you're talking about a square or rectangular one like this, you can just pinch up those corners. So you want to cut that parchment paper bigger than the tray you're putting it on and then just use like paper clips, staples, whatever is small and simple where you can just hold those edges in place so your stuff isn't going to run out. Now I personally haven't tried that method, but several other people have shared that with me and said that works really well for them. But if you can afford it, I still recommend going for the silicone trays because then, I, though I think you might be able to use that parchment paper over as long as you keep it for the same task. Uh, again, I can't say for certain. And again, please share down below any experience you have on that. But I think for a long haul, this is something you're going to keep doing is dehydrating liquids like blended tomatoes like I like to do and make tomato flakes or milk or eggs or anything else is very runny, then having those are going to be really nice for you to, you know, because I... I've already used mine quite a bit since I got them about six months ago. And then what I do is no matter what dehydrator I'm using, I set the heat on 115, no higher than that. You can go a little bit lower, but I do recommend 115. You don't want to go higher because your whole point is to keep the eggs raw. You do not want them to cook. You just want them to dehydrate. And when I did my first video, this was the other thing, is because I was using only the Nesco, I wasn't sure at how long it took to run it. And I was thinking about 10 hours, and it was just a guess because I just keep checking it, especially with the Nesco, because usually you're taking the, uh, the tray that's closest to the heat source off first, and the other ones will take a little bit longer. You can get that one out, deal with that. Whereas if you're dealing with a cabinet style like an Excalibur or a Cabela's or the Cassori like I have, then everything's dehydrating at the same speed. So that's why I wasn't certain about the hours. So what I found is that at 115 degrees, you need to go for about 12 hours minimum. It may take 14. It's going to depend on how thick your layer of eggs is. So for the Cassori with four eggs per tray, it took closer to 14 hours to get them fully dry. But here's the tricky part, you know, at about 10 to 12 hours, I recommend going there and break it up and you'll find some spots that are drier and some spots that are not. That will help dry a little quicker, especially if you can kind of flip it over because usually it's the bottom side that is less likely to dry as fast or the top side is going to dry quicker. So just flip it over and let it finish drying. But you're going to find, and this is one of the things I kept forgetting to mention, that the eggs will have an oily substance on that. That is to be expected. That does not mean it's not fully dry. So if you can break those up really easy, then they are dry. And don't worry about the oil unless you want to. That oil is actually important. There's important fats and flavor in there that's just coming out from the egg yolk. And I highly suggest, if, especially if you're going to use it in baking, that you leave that on there. Don't try to blot it off but that's going to be totally up to you that you've got an option. I don't worry about that going rancid in food storage. I'll talk about that more in a bit, but if you live in a place where you don't have a, pl a, a pantry that you can keep at a fairly cool temperature, not cold, not freezing, obviously, but just cooler, you don't want it to get really hot or a root cellar or whatever, then, you know, yeah, you might want to try to get as much fat out of there as possible, but if you can leave it in, leave it in. I haven't had any issues with my eggs going rancid, even with the ones I keep here in the kitchen that stays warmer than our pantry. And six months later, so far, they're still good. Now, these were the other ones I did about that same time, and these ones are vacuum sealed, and they've been kept in even cooler area and so I'm absolutely not worried about those being rancid. So anyway, once they're fully dry, I find it easiest to just kind of break them up with my fingers. And here's the other nice thing about having at least the silicone trays, I would assume the parchment paper or whatever would work the same way, is that then you can just 
fold the tray, fold it up like this, especially if it's a square solid one, not like a Nesco with a hole in it. That makes it a little more difficult. And then I would just dump it into my blender like that. When I was doing the Kasori, I had six trays in there. I filled all of them up. I put in three trays at a time into the blender. And then for this, just to make it easier, I started blending it just a little bit. And then when it, nothing, when it kind of stopped moving, I took my tamper and just kind of mashed it down a few, a little bit. And that's all it took. And then turned the blender back on. Now, sometimes when I'm doing stuff like that, I find just kind of knocking the side of the blender while it's going. If you see it just sitting there and it doesn't seem like it's moving through like it should. I do this with any kind of powders. I just kind of knock on the side of it to shake things down. You can turn the motor off if you want and stir it up with a chopstick. I usually just kind of knock on the side of it while it's processing and that works pretty good for me. And then obviously you're going to want a canning funnel. Put that canning funnel over your jar and just pour it into whatever jar you're going to use. And then using a chopstick or some other kind of thing that's not going to get easily caught up in the blades, what I do is I simply, and again, I, I, this is one of those things I don't always think to show, there's always going to be stuff kind of caked at the bottom. So I take that and I just swirl it around in there. And a chopstick's better than silicone because silicone will get caught up on those blades in there, especially on the pointy parts. And I just do that and that will get a whole bunch out of the bottom. I do the same thing when I'm grinding my coffee in here. I now use this for grinding coffee. I have coffee grinder that I use for other things, but I'm finding now I use my blender more and more. It just depends on how much I'm doing at a time. If you're just doing a little bit to try it out, a blender isn't the easiest thing because you need more in there for it to work well. In that case, using just a little coffee grinder is best for smaller amounts at a time. You're going to get it to powder up a lot easier. So I use either one depending on the amount I'm needing to do at a time. And then once you have your jar filled up, what you want to do to vacuum seal it, we want to make sure that the top, the rim of the jar is clean. I don't have any powder on there. I then take a clean piece of cloth and I try to look for anything that's cotton, some kind of natural fabric. You can also use a piece of paper towel, a muffin liner, especially those little mini muffin liners if you're using a regular mouth like I'm doing here. Anything that you can lay over the top because whenever you're doing powders, what you need is a barrier over the top. If you do not put a barrier over, your, over the top of your jar before vacuum sealing, What's going to happen is you're, if you're talking powders, this won't matter for things that are whole that are not powdered, you know, like flakes, nuts, chocolate chips, whatever, beans, herbs. Once you go to vacuum seal, what will happen is it'll pull the powder out between the rim of the jar and the lid. And so you'll get some of that embedded along the side right here, along the, the rim of the jar. And you're not going to get a good seal. It might seal, but not hold for more, longer than a minute or so. And so make sure, because I already had that lid on there with some eggs, I, I went ahead and threw that lid into the sink that was on here because it had a little bit of egg powder here. And so I got a fresh lid, then put your lid in place. And then if you're using food saver tops, in this case, I'm using the regular mouth. And I find using the brake bleeder pump with the regular mouth, I don't have any problems. I don't need two lids. I don't need to do anything extra to make it work. You'll find with the regular mouth, if, if you've tried this yet, you're going to have more problems with it sealing unless you take some extra steps like putting a second lid upside down. That adds more pressure to that lid and helps it to seal better. But I never have problems when using a brake bleeder pump, which is what I've been doing for many years. And then even if I use the vacuum chamber that Patrick makes, I still use the brake bleeder pump. I don't use anything electric when I'm vacuum sealing. So I used to pump this up till it got to be about right there, which is 400 or 15. But now I just keep going. Um, I usually go several points past that, or I keep going until the needle just stops moving altogether. Notice again, I'm not using my hand, I'm using my whole arm by pressing the brake bleeder pump, holding it against the counter as support. So not doing this, that's way too hard. Okay, and then just gently try to pick it up, not very far. That way you can test and see if it has indeed sealed entirely. If that lid comes right off, you'll know. And then I still like to follow it up with a band just in case it does come unsealed in storage. And so now I know the next question is going to be, how long will it last in food storage? Well, 
If it's properly stored, vacuum sealing is important with the eggs in my personal opinion and storing it in a cool place, also in a place with very limited to no light. Is These are the three most important things. And I personally think, even though I only started doing this six months ago, I personally think they should last for years like most dehydrated goods. Like anything though, over time, especially with exposure to light and heat, and that doesn't matter if it's freeze dried, dehydrated, canned, whatever, you will start to lose some nutrient content, but it shouldn't ever spoil unless you, you, you're like me, you leave all the fat in there, but you store it in a place that stays pretty warm and you don't vacuum seal it. All those things combined can cause the fat in the eggs to go rancid. I have yet to have that problem in the six months. In fact, I don't have that problem with any fatty stuff. I vacuum seal into jars, be it nuts or dehydrated meats with the fat in them and so on. I just have not had any issues, but some people do. And again, I believe this very, this very much depends on the type of fat and how they're storing it because some fats are more likely to go rancid than others. But anyway, so far so good for me. If anyone has any experience on that for time, like you've been doing it for years, share with us down below how long have your eggs lasted for you that you know for sure and without any issue. And, um, or if you've had problems with stuff going rancid, be it the eggs or anything else, then share with us any details that you think would be helpful for people to understand based on your climate, you know, how hot it is and does it get a lot of light, was it vacuum sealed, so on and so forth. Because these are all the facts that will kind of help people decide where should I store it and if is this going to be the best method for me. Now, for a few years, I've been freezing a lot of the excess eggs from my chickens and I'll still do that. I don't need to do that this year because I never touched the ones from last year. I never got to them. So the reason I will still freeze some of them is I find and I freeze them in little small jars as you can see in this picture. So those are quarter pint jars and they're the perfect size for two blended eggs. So I like to scramble them up. You could do the same thing if you want to separate the egg whites from the egg yolks. And I think in that case, you should still make a great meringue doing that. And I like using the jars before my food saver just quit. I did pretty good with the food saver bags, but when I switched to a Ziploc kind of bag, they weren't desirable when I went to use them. But trying to get away from more of the plastics, I did switch to the little quarter pint jars and I love those. And so I will still be freezing some through the years because I find frozen whole eggs work better for making mayonnaise. And that was the one thing I couldn't do, even though I keep these raw, with the egg powder is I could not get it to blend up and emulsify correctly with the oil when I went to make homemade mayonnaise out of it. And by the way, if you're interested in my homemade mayonnaise recipe, I'll go ahead and link to it down below. I do believe that is where I switched it up and started using half refined coconut oil so you don't have the coconut flavor and scent in there and half avocado oil. And for me personally, I found that was a perfect blend for making mayonnaise. So anyway, I'll link to that down below. And that was the, the only thing I've tried so far that I know didn't work. I did try making a cream pie using that, but I don't know if it was the powdered eggs or if it was the fact I simply just didn't cook it long enough and that's why it didn't set up. That happens once in a great while. <laughs> so um, I'll still be experimenting more with that down the road. But for the other things I've used the, the powdered eggs for, one thing I really, that makes it really easy for me, as I mentioned in a video that recently came out about the egg powder and the cheese powder, is I can take the powdered eggs, I can take the cheese powder, throw them in a measuring cup, I can either add milk or water with a little milk powder, and now I've got a cheese omelet. That's really good. Or even just scrambling it up just with water and the egg itself. It, it will seem at first when you mix that water in there, it's gonna seem grainy, it's gonna seem like, this doesn't look like it's gonna turn out good. But the incredible thing is once you start cooking them, they, they cook up beautifully and they're really well blended because you powdered them. And so I really like them actually, I think they're pretty good. And so now that's what I do whenever I make Patrick a scrambler of any kind, whether it be just scrambled eggs, which I don't usually do. If I'm gonna make them scrambled eggs, then I'll usually add the cheese powder and then I'll take some fresh onions, garlic and other things and then saute them a little bit. And, add the reconstituted eggs and cheese to that and just cook it up is super easy. 
And using the cheese powder like that does make it that easier too because it's all ready to go. But anyway, I talk about that in that egg and cheese one I'll link to down below. And I'll be and I'll be talking about some of that same stuff here, but if you're only seeing this, I want to make sure you understand the egg powder keeping it raw gives it a far far more uses. Remember, you're going to be cooking it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Unless you're planning on eating it straight out of the jar, salmonella is not going to be a problem because you're going to be cooking with it. You're going to, what do you use when you're making pancakes and sweetbreads like apple cinnamon bread or pumpkin spice bread or banana bread? You put raw eggs in there, but then you're going to bake it, so it's going to be fine. So I used it um, so far once. I don't make a whole lot of those sweetbreads just every so often. And I think it was an apple spice bread that I made using some homemade applesauce from the year before, some of the dehydrated eggs, and it, it turned out really tasty. It, it was just, it was really great. I noticed no difference in the bread or the pancakes. That was the one that, that I was a little concerned about. I can use them in pancakes, and my pancakes still turned out fluffy and wonderful as you can see in the pictures here so really great for any kind of bread that you need to use raw eggs and I've made cakes with it yet I would assume they would work just as well for cakes as they would any other kind of bread that you're gonna put raw eggs into that's just a few ideas there that's how I dehydrate my eggs and if you again if you have any other tips or suggestions or ideas or ways that you've used your powdered eggs stored them and so on and so forth go ahead and share with us down below so everyone can learn from you as well and thanks for watching take care and god bless